Hey, welcome everybody to our Monday, and I have a very special guest that's uh, joining us today. Uh, please welcome John Haller. John, uh, wonderful to have you here with me. Yeah, I hope I hope we can think of something to talk about in the next few minutes. I know with you, it's, it's never a problem <laughs> to get started. So uh, I see you are in Jerusalem. I can tell by the uh, looking out the window behind That's sort you. of where I wish I was right now. Yes, that's pretty cool. I get to be there in a few weeks. I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. I have the Dome of the Rock covered up by my you, you do. microphone. You, you that's do. Okay. Yeah. I should reverse it. But that's what was well, you reversed it. So anyway, that, that's look, right. at the, but look at the construction cranes in the background. I uh, mean, yeah. I it's counted amazing. when I was there in December, I counted in like in that area, like 25 giant construction cranes. Oh, they're everywhere. It's they're, unbelievable. They're uh, I hear it's, just, it's the national bird of uh, Israel now, the giant construction crane. Yes, it is, between there and Tel Aviv <laughs> and Herzliya. Right. It's, um, uh, it's very vibrant. Hey, anyway. I'm going to be seeing your friend, our friend, uh, Roddy, when we're in Jerusalem. So I'm going to tell him you said hi. I keep promising him one day I'm going to have John come with me, but I'm looking forward to, we're going to do some, some videos together. I'm looking very forward to it. So I would love to do that. I'll, I'll send you. I'll send you some pictures from there. Okay. Hey, so so much going on with Saudi Arabia and Israel right now. We have the whole normalization agreements. We can look back to the Abraham Accords uh, from 2020. I mean, we we look at this thing has legs, and it's very interesting watching everything develop. I I, I want to ask you about that. I'm going to ask you also about uh, just some of the things going on in the tech world that I just don't think people are really quite aware of um, that we're going to dive into. Um, then there's a new movie out, and, um, and you've seen it. I'm going to see it. I know I'm going to see it. And, uh, and let's start with that and then get into uh, the Saudi Arabia, where we're going to be talking about the king of the north and the king of the south from Daniel chapter 11 which I think, personally, John, is going to really um, wake some people up. So we'll, we'll start with the movie. Okay, the movie is, uh, I think, is produced by TBN, so that might be a little bit of a red flag for some people, but it's called Route 60, The Biblical Highway. And you know that the Route 60 in Israel is the avenue of the patriarchs, and it runs from Nazareth in the north to Beersheba in the south. Uh, so in in the video that I saw recently uh, that they produced, it go, it starts in Nazareth, then it goes down to Shem, Shechem, and uh, Mount Ebal, uh, Shiloh, Bethel, Jerusalem, Hebron, Beersheba. I, I have to tell you that the graphics in it are just absolutely phenomenal. I mean the way they use the scripture and kind of three dimensional and the scrolls and, and the way they kind of integrate the scripture into different scenes of these archeological sites. It's, it's stunning in my view. Uh, now, you know, me, I, I have, uh, I hope to do a tour to Israel next year. I'm trying to get it organized. Um, it's, it's, it's difficult because it's kind of a one man band. But one of the things I want to do is either sort of a traditional tour with an add-on or just ditch the traditional tour and do essentially the biblical heartland tour to the extent that I can. I, it's difficult. It's a little more expensive because of the sites that you want to go to are in the, quote, West Bank, really biblical Judea and Samaria. But the the two main speakers in the video are uh, former U.S. Ambassador to Israel, David Friedman, uh, an Orthodox Jew, and Michael Pompeo. The was, the, I guess, I learned last night, he graduated number one in his uh, class at West Point. He then was CIA director and became Secretary of State. And uh, he's an evangelical. Look, I know that he's probably, he's probably been with some people that I wouldn't really want to be associated with, but I'm telling you that this video was so biblically based and it really provoked a lot of thoughts in me with the the passage that I, I cite all the time in Daniel 
that in Daniel 11 and then Daniel uh, 12, you know, Daniel wants to know what, what does all this stuff mean? And he said, Daniel, it's not for you to know, seal up the book until the time of the end. And at the time of the end, you know, we have these people be running to and fro and knowledge will increase. And I think the deeper meaning of that is they'll be going back and forth through the Bible and the Bible prophecies will, will become real to them. They'll, they'll be coming alive. And I think there's a lot of things that we've just sort of written off that we just haven't really paid that much attention to that. I really think in the, in the, in the next few years, uh, and maybe, even shorter than that, these things are really going to come to life. And so, uh, but in Daniel says, the wise will understand and instruct many. And so I thought of these biblical sites. Now, a number of years ago, Fellowship Bible Chapel, we did a little conference and one of the speakers we brought in was Charles Cooper. And Cooper's, I think he's a Dallas grad. He's pre-Wrath guy, uh, written a lot. He's absolutely brilliant in my mind. I mean, he's just really, really smart. Um, and he made a comment. We, we were talking about that. We went to dinner after the conference, uh, Pam and I and, and, and Coop and his wife. And we brought up the temple, this coming temple. And so there's a lot of controversy. And I, I see Christians, and I've done it too, that, oh, well, this, this is the temple of the Antichrist. And, you know, it, and this, is, this is not going to save anybody and that type of thing. And, and I agree with that. But the thought that all of these different sites provoked me last night. I mean, and they went through the whole story of Jesus and the virgin birth and all this stuff with David Freeman and Mike Pompeo there. But Coop said this temple, he goes, this is going to be a holy temple. And I, I thought, I just kind of filed that in the back of my mind that, okay, I'm not sure, I need to think about that more. And it like popped into my head last night as I'm sitting uh, the other night as I was sitting there watching this Route 60 movie. And I'm thinking like the sites that they went to, Tom, the, the things we, we've talked about this, I don't know if we talked about it on your program, but I know we've talked about it in, at least when we've been together. You know, this, this, the pilgrimage road, the pool of Siloam, the temple mount, all of these things in, in, and the feast, the biblical feast, you know, we're right in the middle of the, in the time between uh, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, which I think are referred to as the days of awe. And we know that these feasts, these fall or winter feasts are going to be fulfilled in connection with Jesus' second coming, just like the spring or summer feasts were fulfilled at his first coming. And I'm, I'm thinking like, all of there's all these things that are being put in place for the wise to instruct the many with. Okay, you've got the pilgrimage road, you've got the pool of Siloam, you've got the mikvah. What does that mean? You know, it's really a precursor to Christian baptism, uh, based on my study. And then, um, you have the Temple Mount and a coming temple, and you have the red heifer. You know, Numbers 19, go read it. It's it's a type of Christ. And so there's there's all of these things that are being brought back into Jewish life and culture and the nation that will help instruct the many. Mm -hmm. I the wise will use to instruct the many. And this this is how this Romans eleven thing gets fulfilled. And I'm just it, it just sort of struck me that the the archaeology is uncovering the pilgrimage road it's a miracle i mean do you know how they found the pilgrimage road or the city of david mm -hmm. you know it, it was like not, it probably was 20 maybe 20 years ago one of them was the they, sewer line that broke the sewer line broke and so they went and they started digging and they thought well wait what are, what's all this stuff we keep yeah. running into when we're digging and they brought the um the archaeologist and i can't remember the lady who sort of headed up that thing i think she's passed away just recently but all of the stuff that's, you know, that they're uncovering. And, you know, we know that Jesus went there. And I've done a teaching on Hanukkah. You know, Jesus went there at the Festival of Lights, the Feast of Lights, Hanukkah. And it was at there where he, he identified himself as the light of the world, which ties into the Feast of Hanukkah, by the way, which I think is a biblical feast that will be ultimately realized, um, 
when Jesus returns, it will be fulfilled. So it, I don't know, it, Tom, it's just this, con, it's what I always talk about, the convergence of all of these things, all of these discoveries that are being made at this time that they're being uncovered. I did a conference in Calgary this year, and one of the speakers was uh, Chris, I'm going to get his name wrong, Chris Atalka, uh, who's with Friends of Israel. He did this phenomenal teaching, bringing in the Jewish aspects applying it to prophecy but jesus bringing jesus into it the, he talked about the kidron the kidron conundrum or something like that the kidron valley connection and what it was was that when when the temple was you know being desecrated we read about that in ezekiel chapter 8 the shekinah glory uh, and that's how a, a guy in the midwest pronounces shekinah glory it kind of hovered over the temple and then it went across the Kidron Valley and then it went up to the top of the Mount of Olives and then it went away. But then Chris did a phenomenal job of bringing, you can go to last day's Bible conference on YouTube and find the video. It was his first talk at the conference about how on Palm Sunday, the Shekinah glory returned to the temple it came down from the Mount of Olives across the Kidron Valley. And then, you know, they were singing these Psalms of Ascent and David Friedman and uh, Mike Pompeo brought those up too. And all of these things are pointing to the, it, it's, it's crammed with messianic information. And so it just sort of, I think, fleshed out what maybe this Daniel passage means in Daniel 12 about the wise will instruct the many because we're being given all of these things to instruct the many with the red heifer the temple the the sacrifice the pilgrimage road the psalms of ascent which are what psalm 118 to 134 so they're 15 psalms i i don't know tom i'm just saying is that this video this movie was incredibly moving to me I, I, I got a comment in here, and then I'll bring you back. Um, sure. So I, I'm looking forward to watching this movie. Um, I, I can't wait. In fact, we're going to Israel. I think you know with the group we're going to be filming, as I mentioned with Roddy. We have some other archaeologists. We're going to be hitting a lot of those spots. So I'm going to have the whole film crew watch the movie before we all go. I'm really excited about it. Um, and then I have a few more things I want to say, though. Is the gentleman's name Chris Katulka from uh, Chris Katulka. Yeah, I think that and the message be. was called the Kidron saga. It's something about Kidron. Okay. I can't remember. I'm looking for why well, I, I pulled it, it up here. It was a clever title. Okay. It was, a, it was enough, okay. a clever enough title that I said, boy, I wish I'd thought of that one. It was from May, right? May 5? Uh, May of, May of 20, uh, 20, 2000, uh, 2023. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's it. I'm going to watch that later on too. So now everybody's heard how to find that. Okay. Now, so I was at a, I think I told you this before, so I don't want to bore you, but I was invited, my wife and I were invited uh, with another couple to go to a uh, Shabbat lunch in Beverly Hills. This is now probably, I'm thinking two months ago. And because we had done a video regarding Holocaust survivors and uh, things about the Holocaust, and it was a kind of a thank you lunch. Went there and there were five rabbis there. These are all non-believing Jews. And, um, the uh, assistant dean of Simon Wiesenthal Center, and some others. Pretty important people. It, it was just a great time. Just a great time. So Shabbat, they're all singing in Hebrew out of the Bible. They're singing from Deuteronomy. One of the gentlemen there, he was informing me every song where it was coming from in the Bible. And, and it, was, it was just really a great time, John. So all the rabbis spoke for about three minutes. And then... Uh, the leader said, hey, uh, Pastor Tom, would you like to speak? And why did you do the video you did? You know, we'd all like to hear. So what I, to I, I told him, John, I said, you know, the obvious thing that's different between you guys and me is that I believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And I said, and then from there, I just started to talk about exactly what you just said, not the movie. But I said, I don't think it's a coincidence that right now, uh, the Pool of Siloam, Shiloh, is, is being excavated and more and more is being discovered. And 
we have the processional road. I mean, you look at it, it is phenomenal. And talked about Shiloh and the things being discovered there now. They're still being uncovered. There, it's remarkable. The Temple Mount, going underneath the Western Wall now. Here it is, what month are we in? September? Just three months ago, these things weren't even shown to the public yet. Now they are. And I'm looking going, I don't think it's a coincidence. I said, personally, I think this is leading up to the Messiah. I can't point my Bible and say, you're going to discover these things. But I said, there's something going on that all of these things are being uncovered uh, right now in Israel. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's coincidence. And then in Psalm 102, this is so, such a cool passage to me, John. Psalm 102, the psalmist wrote, uh, but you, O Lord, shall endure forever and the remembrance of your name to all generations. You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time to has come. For your servants take pleasure in her stones and show favor to her dust or delight in her dirt. And, and you read that, and you go, wait a minute. This is exactly what's going on in Israel and it's getting more so. There, I mean, you look at the stones, the rocks, every stone tells a story. You look at the archaeology finds, delighting in their dirt exactly as God says, so the nation shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth, your glory, for the Lord shall build up Zion and appear in his glory. And I, you know, everything that you're saying, John, to me, it gets me so excited. For anybody that's been to Israel, I have no doubt that they've been there. You start connecting with this, the things you're talking about, the archaeology and the finds and everything else. I just think it's, I, I can't wait to see the movie, but I can't wait to go back to Israel too. Yeah, so another brother, I don't know if I should you know, mention his name, but I was listening to him and he, he brought up a verse like, I think this, is, this stuff is happening because never heard anybody bring it up. It was like Isaiah 63, 18. And he was talking about the temple and 2030 and 2000 years and the two day, one day of Jose. And I, I did, I think one of the talks I did at one of your conferences was along that lines, because I do think 2030 could be very significant, but he said, you know, there's this verse in Isaiah 63, 18, it says your holy people held position possession for a little while. And it's like, that's what's going to happen with this temple. They're going to have this temple for a little while. And then the Antichrist is going to desecrate it. But it's also interesting. Like I'm thinking of the, the symbol, the typology, the pattern of the Pool of Siloam. As Jesus used it, he identifies himself as the light of the world. And then he heals the blind man. He, he puts the stuff on the blind man's eyes. And he says, go wash in the Pool of Siloam. And he's no, he, he's, he sees, he sees everything. You know what I mean? He, he was blind, but now he sees. And I'm thinking of the typology cool. of that as how this yeah. is going to work. Romans chapter and 11. I, right. And I, I just think that I think we're at this time wow. and I, I would highly recommend people if you can get, um, I don't know if it's, if it's going to play after, uh, when I saw it, they said it was the, recently it was only going to be in two days, but I'm sure it's going to come back. And I think it'll be a, a TBN. It's, it's a wonderful thing. And it's so rich, uh, like the visit to Bethel and I've been to Bethel and, uh, it's, they talked about the idolatry that kept coming into the, to the Jewish, to the, uh, people after the division of the kingdom and eventually the Assyrians came in. I mean, this is all coming from David Friedman. I mean, it's like you could learn from him. I would love to meet him and just sit and talk to him for a while. And then the visit to the tomb of Rachel, you I won't ruin it. Just go watch that part. Make sure you're paying it. Don't don't be going getting, you know, your twenty five dollar bucket of popcorn when he's talking about Rachel's tomb in Bethlehem. Wow. Uh, or the area of Bethlehem. And then they went down to the tomb of the patriarchs in, um, in uh, Hebron. So it's, which I've been to a few times. And I think you've been there too, haven't you? Uh, that I, I actually, no, we're filming there uh, in a few weeks. Okay. And, and uh, me, I'm looking if, forward if, to it. if you want to text me, I can get you directions up to Mamre. Okay. It's, I've been to Mamre. I have been to Mamre before okay. with, with uh, Aaron Lipkin. 
Okay. Uh, well, then yeah. that's you've been there. Yeah. It's a little hard for the Jewish Israelis to get there because yes, it it's is. it's not necessarily safe. But uh, but boy, what what an incredible thing! And what I think it just was like there were all these little prophecy bells and whistles going off in my head about not so much the great history and everything that they were doing and how well the thing was done, but how, how are we going to, how can we use this to instruct the many? That's, that's the thing. I don't think that it's an accident that all the stuff is coming to the fore right now. The, uh, the getting ready, what appears for the possibility of sacrifices starting again, a temple being built, all of these things being discovered from, Israel's past from the Old Testament, uh, even from the New Testament, still going on until 70 AD. And you look and go, wow, it's like a, a, this just crying out. Hey, by the way, if you're up with the Temple Mount when you're there in, uh, in the near future, go over by the Golden Gate on the inside, on the Temple Mount side, and see if those uh, logs are still down there. Those those wood beams are still down there underneath that tarp. There used to be a tarp with about eight wood beams that Give a look. 10 years ago, biblical archeology span review said those seven of those were, they did carbon dating on them, 2000 years old. They were cedars from Lebanon, 2000 years old. They're virtually certain that these were beams in the temple of Herod. Wow. I mean, and then there's one okay. other beam there though, that's 3000 years old. That takes you back to the, and that would be the Solomon. time of Solomon. That's that, right. And they think it is. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a, a, a WhatsApp. You have video a lot of work to do when you get over there. You better not. Be... I know I, the schedule's <laughs> enormous. We're filming, and then a tour group's coming. I can't wait to meet sure. everybody. I tell you, it's gonna be just a, an unbelievable time. Okay, but now, okay, we're gonna shift gears. We don't have a lot okay. of time left, but a, a lot to cover. I, John, I could sit and listen to you for hours, but, <laughs> but. Um, I don't have hours today, so with we'll that, try to keep this one short. So, well, we'll try. So, um, Saudi Arabia, we're watching the th Saudi Arabia Israel. Um, what are your thoughts on things? We're I mean, it's just it is really amazing. I, I think it's coming. This. Plus, there's there's there was an agreement reached. It's pretty much like a very significant defense agreement reached just the other day between like a treaty between the United States and Bahrain, which is part of the Abraham Accords, which is like a further step down the road of the Abraham Accords. And Bahrain is very significant. It's a, it's an area that Iran claims that it owns. And it's a Sunni ruled, but Shia people. Most of the people are, are Shia Islam. And they've been having some, the Iranians are always trying to cause trouble there. But, you know, that's where Jared Kushner went when he was pushing out the Abraham, uh, uh, the vision for peace and the Abraham Accords thing, he went to Bahrain and did a big talk. And there's also things he, like back in 2017, he was meeting with Mohammed bin Salman, trying to get him into the normalization thing. They seem to be friends. He's got, uh, he's been given billions of dollars from the, so the Saudi wealth fund to invest and allowed to invest up to a billion dollars of it in Israel. A Saudi That's, money. This this is incredible yeah. stuff, and there's a lot of thinking that. Uh, and I heard just yesterday, Avi Abelo. I don't know if you know who Avi is. I I was walking around around the menorah there in the the Jewish quarter, and oh, there's Avi. You know, I've watched him, and he used to do shows with Caroline Glick and everything. So I went up and introduced myself, and we talked a little. Well, he did an interview yesterday on Pulse of Israel. You can get it. It's a podcast with uh, Mordecai Kadar. Mordecai Kadar is probably the leading Jewish Islamic expert in, in, in Israel. It, this guy is brilliant. And he made a very, it, I, uh, since I know we're a little bit pressed for time, I'll try to shorten this. He made the point that the Saudi, the Saudi version of Islam, there's many versions of Islam, the Saudi version of Islam does not think that it, that Jerusalem is holy, that this is not where Muhammad did his thing. And Muhammad bin Salman has allowed to be published over the last several years, some articles, research, blogs, whatever, from Saudi Arabia saying, this is not where Muhammad did his night journey thing. 
And one of the reasons they're doing that, go and go and do a Google Earth and and zero in a 3D view of Mecca and look at what the Saudis have done to Mecca. The third largest, tallest building on the planet is there, the largest shopping mall, the largest hotel. And they've completely transformed that area. And part of it is because as the keeper of the Holy Mosque, King Salman, Mohammed bin Salman's father, who seems to be not long for this world, uh, given his condition, he's the keeper of the Holy Mosque. And so what Mohammed bin Salman wants to do is a couple of things, is he really wants to get control of the Temple Mount from Jordan, diminish it in the eyes of Islam, and then push people going to Mecca and Medina. And the, the mosque in Medina has been expanded. I mean, they're trying to get this mosque in Mecca to the point where we'll be able to accommodate five million people at one time. Oh, oh, it, it's, wow. it, it, But he wants to get control of the Temple Mount, okay? And so I don't know what's going to go on. I mean, the Saudis were the one who, who kicked the Hashemite family out of running Me Mecca and Medina, and the Hashemites took it over when the Ottomans were kicked out, which is Turkey. And Erdogan is dead set on Jerusalem. Yes, he is. When, when, and I've talked about this a lot. I did a thing with Pablo, and I think we put up a graphic. I've done it in some of my updates recently. December 6, 2017, Trump says, I'm moving the embassy to Jerusalem, the U.S. embassy. Within the next, over the next week, Erdogan, every, his main newspaper, Yeni Sefak, S-A-F-A-K, published these things, including, Tom, the best map of Ezekiel 3839. I mean, I think when we were at uh, uh, Rockwall, uh, Texas, the um, which is significant because that's where the red heifers came from, by the way, yeah, that are yeah, in yes. Israel right now. Yes, yes. <laughs> and they got more, they got more ready to go, is my understanding. And uh, and I think Andy might Andy Woods might have put up a Ezekiel 3839 map. I'm telling you, he needs to get Erdogan's map and start using it. <laughs> we all need to use it. Because what this is setting up, though, is if Mohammed bin Salman reduces Jerusalem, there's going to be a big war. And I'm thinking, and some of the people I'm talking to in the background uh, that are look, watching Saudi Arabia big time and Turkey big time, because we know Turkey's part of this Ezekiel 38 and 39, but this is Ezekiel 38 and 39. This is the king of the north and the king of the south conflict that's talked about in, in uh, Daniel chapter 11. And, and a lot of us are beginning to think that this is being set up right now as we speak with the way things are going on with the Saudi normalization, what Mohammed bin Salman wants to do, and based on this map that Erdogan allowed to be published, published and an interactive map that you can get to from the Yeni Safek website is um, indicative of how the king from the north will react to this and there will be a big conflict. It, it'll be a war. It'll be a war. So it's very interesting to watch this unfold. So I, I, I'm not saying, I'm not saying is this is the king of the north and the king of the south. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying is it sure seems to be being set up that way right now. Uh, I, I just actually the time. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you another question, which could, which okay. is really going to be interesting in a second, get your opinion on which direction it'll go. But uh, before that, hey, everybody, uh, Jam Markell's going to be joining me tomorrow. Uh, so make sure that you tune in. And also on Wednesday, exclusive on the app will be Brandon Holdhouse. So uh, exciting week. Um, again, Jam Markell, Tuesday, Brandon Holdhouse on the app, exclusive on Wednesday. Okay, John, uh, back to you. Um, when the, What do you think is going to happen when... Uh, MBS gets control when the king dies. 
I think a lot of things are going to change very quickly. Quickly, I think it's gap it's super fast. Yep, yeah, I mean it'll be. I think it'll be head spinning. I mean, he's already putting a lot of these things in place. Uh, and I'm just seeing uh, this, go look up at what they're doing with this Bahrain agreement, this defense arrangement, because that's the template for what Saudi Arabia wants the U.S. to enter into with them. Um, and so when when the king passes, the, the king is very pro-Palestinian. Mohammed bin Salman does not seem not. to be that pro-Palestinian. And this has been an incredible month. I mean, this is the month where... Uh, you know, September 13th was the 30th anniversary of the signing of the Oslo Accords on the lawn of the White House before 3,000 witnesses, which seems to be kind of a biblical number. Um, you know, we're talking about the the, the Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah, uh, the Fall Feast, Tabernacles coming up as, as well. All, all of this stuff is like compressed right now. You know, and now we have the big meeting in New York with the Sustainable Development Goals and all the things that that wants to bring in and, you know, get the Terra Carta thing with Prince Charles and you got sustainable development goals and net zero and climate change and all this stuff. And then you got the lady at the head of the EU, uh, Ursula von der Leyen, uh, doing her state of the union speech last week, uh, after she went to the G20 meeting at the G20 meeting, she puts out this statement that says the future is digital. Yeah. And we need to go along with everything that the World Health Organization says. And if you don't comply, then you won't be able to uh, basically, basically buy what she said. Yeah, you won't be able to buy yourself. You don't comply. So I, I don't, you know, I'm not a date setter. Uh, I, 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 don't, I, I don't think that's a wise thing to do. But I do believe it's wise, Jesus says, to watch and be ready. And we see all these things developing. But even if all these other things were going on, John, Digital currency, um, you know, the, the, I think the SDG goals are very significant as a tool that will be used to control the masses of the world. Uh, they're going to come in with their laws and their rules and everything else. Uh, all these different events, everything that you just mentioned could happen at any time. But if Israel wasn't a nation yet, if they didn't have Jerusalem, then they wouldn't have a placeholder for anybody to be able to say, hey, it looks like things are about ready to go down. But then you, with everything you say, you zero in on Saudi Arabia. We zero in on the Temple Mount. Um, we know the wake via Jordan it has control of that. Uh, I mean, MBS has never been a fan of the Palestinian cause. I mean, not since he's no. had any position where he's been able to talk. He certainly hasn't. And it, it's, a tribal, it's a tribal society, so he will respect his father's wishes. Well, his father is alive. Yeah, uh, as long as his father's alive. Uh, but, but you can go back to the 1930s and even early 1940s and find out, hey, Muslims didn't believe that Jerusalem was a, a, a big deal. They, they believed, I mean, you read it. You can read documents from back then. They believed, no, Jeru uh, the Temple Mount belonged to the Jews, and that's where the Temple was. It, it's never been a big deal for the Saudis. But I think for the Ottomans and the Turks and others, the Temple Mount is a bigger deal. And Erdogan tipped himself back in 2017 as to how he's going to react and how he thinks the Islamic world should react to anything dealing with Jerusalem. I mean, it was day after day after day in the newspapers at that time. I have copies of all the front pages of these things, and you, they all have the Dome of the Rock on them. But you don't see that central and core in the Saudi press, in the Saudi newspapers. In fact, you, you see the opposite because they promote Mecca and Medina because of the commercial, the big investment that they've made in those places. Well, I, so, and, and, you know, bringing, I'm going to, I'm looking forward to going further into the King of the North and the King of the South of Daniel chapter 11, just yeah. based on everything that you have said today. Okay, we are yeah, running out of time. I, okay, give me give me one minute, oh. minute and a half, because I, I heard you talk with uh, Lee Brainerd recently, and you were talking about the Ten Kings and that type of thing, and you mentioned, I think, that the Ten Kings have to be in place when the Antichrist comes on the scene. That's what I believe, yeah. And, and we don't know how this is coming about. So Netanyahu goes, he does a thing with Elon Musk, uh, Brockman from OpenAI, and Max Tegmark from MIT, all these brilliant MI AI guys, and he, and he does he does a pretty good job. 
I think objectively you could say that whether you like him or not, but there's a guy named Mike Eisenberg on, on Twitter. And Mike says this, that he's talking about this meeting and he says, uh, the very fact that the prime minister of Israel met with Elon Musk before he met with the president of the United States conveys something profound about a shift in power in the world. This is a tweet he just put out today. The CEOs of the technology companies are stronger today than the world leaders. They are a center of power. When Musk joked that the unofficial president of the United States, that he was the unofficial president of the United States, it was a nod to the truth because of the strength of technology, especially in a digital world. I think it's a very, prof I don't know if this guy knows, well, he's, it, this was, the post was originally written in, in, written in Hebrew, so it had to be, I had to translate it. I don't, I don't think he understands sort of the prophetic significance of what he's talking about. And what I'm saying is I'm seeing this stuff in secular press in places all the time, you know, and it's, believe me, we could go for hours to talk about this. So well, you I'll, got, I'll try to wrap it up there. Well, you got to, <laughs> well, you got to uh, I give you three more minutes because I've, you got me, uh, you've, you have me intrigued. Now, my, my friend, David Tal, who's been on here a few times, Israeli friend. I've seen him. Yeah. He's, he proposed that to me a couple of years ago. He goes, Hey, I believe the tech I believe the Ten Kings will be. It's going to be these. It's going to be a tech-ruled kingdom that's that's coming. Well, uh, he, look, if the mark of the beast and the technology for the mark of the beast comes from tech and digital and that type of thing, and and what was the article I think you posted the other day was the singularity. Uh, Ray Kurzweil, who's the big singularity guy, which means when tech kind of takes over everything and sort of overcomes humanity is now 2030. Remember the famous Time magazine cover from probably 10, 12 years ago now, 2045, the year man becomes immortal. Um, uh, Kurzweil just said that's going to be 2030. And and at this, go listen to this 50 minute thing that, that Netanyahu did with these tech guys. Uh, you can find it on the internet and I'll play some clips of it in my next update, but he, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, they, they talked about Elon Musk has always been sort of coy about the singularity thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now he said, I think Kurzweil is right. And this, this singularity thing to him, this is, this is what Elon Musk said. Look it up. This is, this is about heaven that we're creating where you'll have this great life you won't have to work and things will be pretty good. Wow. So, so now you see, yeah. so now you see where, where Patrick Wood said the technocracy thing was an economic system, but the transhumanism thing brings in the religion. Remember the clip I played at the conference, Yuval Harari. I love coming to Google. I love coming to Silicon Valley. This is what he said back in 2015, eight years ago. I love coming to Silicon Valley because it is here that the religions that will control humanity in the 21st century are being created. Boom. Boom is right. <laughs> Mic drop or whatever you yeah. do. No, no kidding. I, I'm just telling you, Tom, I yeah. just, um, you know, it, it's uh, Tuesday, you know, <laughs> and I worked all day today. So I, I did, I, I was thinking about this as I was working because it's, I have time to do that, but I mean, it's it's just like Tuesday. I think it's Monday. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I keep forgetting what day we're. <laughs> I'm losing track. I'm just saying is, I do my updates now, and they don't have a shelf life of, I, of like I, more I, than I, three no. weeks uh, or more than a week. I think. I, I know. I look at it. I, I just find it. It's just everything is moving so fast. John, f uh, final question for you: When you look at sure. everything that's that's going on. Um, I mean, is there anything that surprises you right now? Saudi, the, what's going on with Saudi Arabia and Israel? Um, what uh, this whole thing with Netanyahu, the, the tech thing you were just talking about? I don't or know any of, any of the things you talked about. How about how about the Route sixty and just these things being revealed for Israel to the right. world also? 
Well, but I think for all of us too, because all of this, I mean, the point of that Route 60 thing is this is our common heritage that we have. You know, the Judeo-Christian thing, that it, it only means something because it's true, because this is where it happened. And I, I'm just thinking as what I'm seeing, I think, is that with all of these discoveries and a hunger among the Jewish people and other people to find out about it, it's, it's giving us the tools to be part of the wise to instruct the many. I think I I just am more convinced of that right now than I was before I went to see uh, Route 60 the other day. Wow, that's great. Uh, John, thank you as always. Thank I, you. I could just listen to you for hours. Someday we'll do one of those really, really, really long sessions, and I think it would be just great. Um, listen, everybody, thank you for joining me. And again, you can follow John at Fellowship Bible Church. Check him out on YouTube. I know many of you already do, but you can see his description. You can see everything for connecting with John in the description. John, I look forward to seeing you as soon. And and should the Lord Terry, I really got to get you to Jerusalem with me. Or I'm gonna we have to go get there. To, we got to get there together. We've got some things to do. That'd be great. God bless you, okay. everybody. God bless. Thank you.